What's up fellow YouTubers? My name is Mike and uh, today I'll be making a video of, uh, of putting together a DIY Les Paul kit. This one is particularly for a customer. Um, he wants it shiny black with white bindings. Um, he doesn't want to show the wood grain so uh, we're gonna have to primer this one to make sure we got all the wood grains covered. We're just gonna do a nice shiny uh, black with a shiny clear coat finish. We're going to be using some automotive supplies. Um, I saw a couple videos of a guy here on YouTube. He makes some great videos and I really liked the product he was using and uh, the way his finishes were coming out. So I actually went ahead and uh, bought a duplicate color uh, primer. Uh, the black paint and this uh, automotive clear, it's basically two cans in one. Um, you take this red cap off, you put it in the bottom, you pop it in and uh, it mixes it up in there and uh, basically gives you automotive uh, quality clear coat, which is pretty damn cool if you don't have any uh, spray gun equipment or uh, air compressors and things like that. I will definitely uh, link his YouTube channels as well since this is where I got it from. I'm not trying to uh, say that I figured this out, but this guy does make some beautiful guitars and uh, I'll be more than happy to share his link uh, in the description. Uh, basically, what the customer wanted was a shiny black and gold guitar. So I have a bunch of uh, golden accessories here, which I will give you a, a better close-up because they're very very beautiful But in short, uh, we're gonna be using gold tuners, uh, gold bridge and saddle uh, 500k uh, EMG pots and uh, H4 and H4A EMG gold uh, pickups To top it off, we're most likely going to be using some carbon fiber uh, covers for the back for these uh, control cavities and uh, I'll probably be making that on my CNC machine. I've, uh, I've made a couple other guitars. Uh, this one's uh, for a Telecaster. I made the pick guard and the control plate cover. Uh, and once again, I'll, I'll zoom into these things so you guys could get a clear picture of what it looks like after it's done. So uh, let's get in this build and uh, I'll definitely be really excited to show you guys some more. Stick around. Alright guys, so here's the parts that are going to be going on this guitar. As you can see, they're really, really nice and shiny. These are the uh, EMG conversion kits. They're the long shafts. This one's made for uh, Les Pauls. But I believe you probably could use this for other guitars as well because it, it does come with two... Uh, adjusting nuts which you could adjust uh, the height of it and uh, let this back end basically sit a little lower and uh, you could probably make it work this is the guitar neck i forgot to mention in that video where uh, i actually put my own little design on top of the headstock and it's similar to the original les pauls but i did give it a little uh bit of my own touch because I didn't want to just outright copy theirs and uh, that's the neck 
we're gonna be painting this all black we're gonna make a shiny finish this is the body gonna sand it down first uh, and uh, then move on to the primering stage and uh, I'll just keep recording and updating you of all the steps and uh, processes that I take to get this guitar body ready for uh, paint, uh, polish and putting it together. So stay tuned and I will show you guys more. Welcome back guys. Um, today we're actually gonna start sanding this body. Uh, we're gonna be using mainly 220 grit. I like to use these Diablo uh, sanding discs that I get from Home Depot. It's really cheap and it lasts a long time. Uh, it's kind of like a mesh. I could bring it closer to the camera. Uh, it lasts a lot longer, in my opinion, than the regular paperbacked ones. So we're gonna hit the back wood with 220 grit because it's a lot more coarse uh, but the front since it is a, a veneer and it's a lot thinner we're gonna go with 400 and we want this front to be a lot more smoother so let's just get into it and uh, get this guitar going make sure you have your respirators on guys let's get to this so we're starting with the, uh, the 220 grit I like doing all my flat surfaces first I feel like uh, the flat surfaces are a lot easier and it's a nice way to get into actually starting off with the guitar. So we're going to keep sanding it down until we're satisfied. Trying to get maybe all these uh, sharp edges and burrs that the wood naturally had and get any minor scratches that may show up uh, later on in the surface. I see a lot of people uh, use thinner blocks. I like to use the thicker one. Uh, it definitely gets a lot less flex in it and bend. And uh, you kind of do have a better grip on it as well. So I personally uh, think if you're trying to do a smooth surface, it's flat, use the thicker block. And this body was already fairly clean. Uh, it has some minor scratches here. I don't know if the camera could get it. If you look in this area, it has a little bit of a scratch from the previous DA or something, but we're trying to basically level that out where uh, you either can't see it or it's just very, very tiny at, at, uh, at the end of sanding all of this. And as you can see, I'm going with the uh, grain of the wood. It's not really gonna matter for this guitar, uh, especially because we're gonna primer it and paint it. But uh, it's, it's a pretty good practice to actually just go with the grain of the wood every time you're sanding uh, or working with wood for that matter. All right. So that back part is pretty smooth. I got, I'd say about 80% of that little line out, which I'm not too worried about. I'm not going to waste too much time on that because we're going to primer it and a lot of that stuff, like I said, is going to get covered. Next step, we're going to go ahead and do the uh, rounder edges. This particular spot right here is uh, probably the hardest part because you can't really, you can't really hold it or or it just takes it takes a lot of uh precision and you don't you, you gotta go with the grain of the wood to get nice strokes so i'm gonna start off with the hard part and then we'll just uh, keep moving forward on the rest of the body for that you're probably gonna want to uh, use a rounder sanding block 
and uh, let's get let's get to it and see how hard this one actually is to get cleaned up. One thing I did learn is that I kind of hugged the guitar body and, and mount it down so it's uh, more controlled when you're standing it. It does seem to work pretty good for me. I don't know if you guys have any better ideas of this. Feel free to write it in the comments and uh, we'll definitely like to try that out. And uh, you do got to be careful not to sand the binding because these areas on the less tall kits are usually a lot thinner so just keep that in mind when you're sanding not to go overboard or sand too much so i'm pretty satisfied with the way this looks again we're gonna primer this if it was just gonna be uh, a stain and then clear coat i definitely put more time into this but since we're going to primer it and none of that is going to show, it feels smooth to the touch, it's going to be good. For these curb ties, I love going in one straight shot rather than uh, doing the little portion at a time. Uh, you could start off with little portions at a time if you're just trying to take away material, but this body is really clean as it is. so. I don't really have the need to do that. I just do long strokes and uh, I can already see this side is fully ready to go. So we're just gonna continue around the whole body of the guitar until we're fully satisfied. And then we can start doing the circle corners, the edges. You want to uh, make sure you're going flat with the part and not to bend over because you don't want to uh, mess up the edges while you're trying to straighten out the sides. So always make sure you're nice and flat. Uh, just to give a better example, we want to go down flat on the sides, as flat as possible. All right. So the sides I'm satisfied with. Next. This part is really, really, really important. You want to make sure uh, all these corner edges, they're nice and round. You don't want to have any sharp, sharper edges. Uh, when you normally look at the wood, you could tell it has lines in it. Uh, and you definitely want to eliminate those because they will come uh, become a problem later on down the line uh, when you're doing finishing or color sanding or anything like that. Another really good reason why I like using these meshes is because they're a lot more flexible for these corners. As you can see, it just lays right over it and uh, it gives you a lot more refining, if you would say, for these corners, corners and edges. Again, this body is really clean as it is, so it doesn't look like we're gonna need to do a lot of work here, but I still like to go over it and make sure all the greens and uh, grits match.
I normally don't use a sanding block for this. I kind of spread my fingers out and I kind of like uh, lodge this sandpaper in and it makes like a perfect round uh, edge or a circle for going to grip that corner right. I'm just going to touch up this edge right here to make that a little more smoother. Uh, you probably won't be able to see it with the camera, uh, the, different, the difference between the edges, but I definitely do see it with my eyes, so I'm definitely going to touch that up before we move forward. Again, just lodge it in between your fingers, space it out, and lightly go over it. I think that looks perfect right there. Now that we got our back end and the corners of our guitar sanded down, we're gonna move on to the front, which we're gonna do with a 400 grit, because it's a lot more thinner and seems like it's a lot more softer wood. And then we'll move on to the neck portion of it. Here I got my 400 grit. I like all right guys, so now we're on to the front. Uh, I like using paper towels. I kind of fold them up. Get them look a little something like this. Uh, since the Les Paul is curved up top, we want to have a little buffer or like a cushion to it. So we're going to hit this with the 400 grit again. I got my paper towel on. Uh, the front is really clean as it is again. So we're going to do very light sanding just to make sure it's uh, nice and ready for the final. I am trying to stay away from the bindings. So later on when we scrape it off, uh, it'll be a lot easier to scrape if everything is level. So do keep that in mind. guys so the front's good i'm happy with that let's move on to the neck uh so we can get this thing primary tonight the next uh the same material as the back so we're gonna use uh, the 220 again sanding block for the flat surfaces and then we'll switch it off to hand uh, when we're doing the actual radius parts. Again, I'm staying away from these uh, bindings and indentations because I want to keep those as clean as possible. You could always try to mask it with, uh, with some masking tape if you're not too confident in your filming skills. 
I've been doing this for a while, so I'm fairly confident. I just hold it at an angle and I barely ever even touch that, so I'm not going to take the chance to mask it, but you can if you'd like to. Alrighty guys, I think I'm pretty satisfied with the sanding job for now. Uh, I'm going to mount a round tube to the back of this and a round tube for the actual guitar body. I'll show you what I'm doing once I get it mounted on there. Uh, I basically screw it with some screws to areas that you're not going to see after the guitar is built. And I will show you exactly why I do it uh, when the time is right. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. All right guys, so I cut off a, a 118 inch dowel. We're gonna screw this into the guitar body so we can have something that will actually uh, stick it in, which would be this tube right here. It'll go in and we could mount this tube somewhere on the table and then it'll give us the ability to flip our guitar around when we're doing primer so you don't have to hold with one hand or uh, be too difficult and you could have a better control on your sprayer if you could have both hands available. So I've already made the holes for it. Um, as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and start screwing those in. Be careful not to screw in to the other side. You could probably use a uh, shorter screws but I actually this is what I have so this is what we're going to use at the moment and uh, basically looks a little something like that and then when you put the uh, put it in the tube and mount this tube on the table you can easily just turn it around and it's that much easier to spray your guitar bodies so that's for the body let's go ahead and get the neck going I already did screw uh, pre-drill these as well so we won't eat too much time off of the videos and same with this as you can see just slide it in the tube and uh, easily move it around when you're spraying it. So next, I'm going to wipe this wood down with some denatured alcohol and a lint-free cloth. So it's, we, we make sure we remove all of our dust particles or wood, wood pieces out of the body before we're ready to spray. So that's my denatured alcohol and this is my lint-free cloth. You don't have to go too heavy on it. You don't want to really wet, uh, wet the wood too much either. So just a light uh, amount of alcohol should be plenty. I like using it because it dries quick and uh, it also removes any grease that might have came off of your hands into the actual wood parts.
All right, guys, so now that we've actually cleaned up the wood, we're gonna mount these tubes onto the table and start our first coat of primer. Just to let you know, these are also uh, for hanging clothes. They sell these at Home Depot, so you could simply just go buy one tube, split it in half, and you'll have enough for the neck and the body. So uh, Home Depot is where you're gonna get these guys at. Alright guys, so I've been shaking up this can uh, for about like 5-10 minutes now. Uh, it's semi-warm. I like spraying all my uh, primers and spray can products uh, when it's warm, so I, I put it in hot water. Uh, this is basically what we're using today, a duplicator primer. And uh, the first coat, we always go ahead and give it a very light mist coat. And then we follow up to give our uh, heavier runs after the second and third one. So. Here we go guys, we always spray it once, make sure it's clean, and let's go. Alright, that should be it for the first coat. We're going to let this dry for like 10-15 minutes uh, and then go ahead and put a nice thicker uh, second coat and we'll probably let that dry for another 30 minutes before we put our uh, hopefully third and final coat. So there you have it. Let's move on to the actual body next and uh, we'll keep it going. Can you bring the camera from this side? Yes. Because it's all up from the back. Sure. Let's go and drop it. Let's go and drop it.
is the third layer of primer. It looks like I'm gonna do one more heavy coat, but we're gonna let this dry overnight, give it a light sand, uh, and then we'll better see if it needs any more primering, because uh, we don't wanna overbuild it either, but at the same time, we won't really find out until the thing is sanded down so we can see if there's any open spots. So stay tuned and uh, we'll be back tomorrow to put on another layer if we need to. And uh, if we don't, we're just going to sand it out and get ready for paint. Welcome back, guys. So uh, it's been three days since we primered our guitar body and the neck. Uh, the primer came out really good. I was really satisfied with it. I was thinking I was going to have to sand it and primer it again. Luckily, we didn't have to run into that situation. Um, I already did sand the body and the neck. I kind of got carried away uh, sanding and it was coming out really good. So I just kept moving it forward and uh, it's already sanded, ready to go. I basically started off with a 220 grit for the back and then uh, again, same for the front all the sides, then I moved that up to a 400, then I moved that up to a 600, then an 800, and uh, my final 800 was uh, actual uh, sanding paper like this. It's not really sanding paper, it's more of like a mesh. It's really flexible and gives a nice little finishing touch to it. So everything's ready, I'm happy with it. Looks like we're gonna go ahead and spray paint this black today. But before I started spray painting it, I wanted to clear the bindings. So. Uh, they're, they sell tools for this. I personally don't like the tools. You could uh, just get like an X-Acto knife or a razor blade and carve an edge into it to have a perfect runaround. But at the same time, a lot of these DIY bodies, the bindings are already not uh, equal or even anyway. So I just freehand it. I like to clear out my binding now so I could sand this primer down and smooth it out a little bit more. And when I paint it black, it'll take a lot lighter of a rub to just clear that binding off before I give the clear. As I mentioned before, we're not gonna expose the binding on the sides, we're just gonna expose it in the front. I already did start binding it, uh, cleaning the bindings a little bit, so I'm gonna continue doing that. As you can see, the rest of the guitar is not done yet. But uh, overall, the primer came out really good, nice and smooth, as you could see. Give you guys a little close up. And same thing with the back. This is the neck. I already did sand down all these edges so it's smooth. You don't have, your finger doesn't hold up against it when you're running it down there. And uh, overall, I'm pretty pleased with the primer job. It was a one shot thing. Came out really good. I'm really happy with it. So uh, I'm gonna continue scraping the bindings now and uh, start sanding these edges down lightly. We'll mask the neck and we're pretty much ready to give it its first cone of paint. It's gonna be black, it's gonna be another spray can paint. I showed it in the, the beginning of the video, it's gonna be this duplicolor acrylic enamel paint. So let's get into this again, guys. just want to take your time with this no need to rush you don't want to scrape any areas you're not supposed to scrape I just put little pressure and just work my way down I move around the angles a little bit like this just to get my smoothest uh, line going You just want to keep your area clean, keep cleaning your blade so you can actually uh, see where you're cutting and how deep it's going, what angle you have it at. Just 
taking my time, slowly putting pressure down, and we do need that binding. We're just about at the edge. Cool. So there you have it, guys. The binding is exposed. It's hard to see because it's very similar in color, but we got our binding exposed. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and sand down these edges now to smooth it out. I'm gonna use 600 grit sandpaper and uh, just literally light water just to get it as smooth as possible. And not too much either. I don't wanna introduce too much water to this body. So, uh, The lighter the better on water. Just dry it up as you go. I literally just like sandpaper into the bottle. Uh, that way it's a lot more controlled and spraying and getting it everywhere. And then like seven to eight inches of sanding, I clean it off and dip it in again and keep going at it until all the edges are nice and smooth. The exacto does a pretty good job at uh, cleaning the edges, but uh, still can't hurt to smooth it out a little bit more with some sanding paper. And so there you have it, the binding is exposed. I'm gonna dry this out really well for like five, 10 minutes. I don't want any of the water staying on there. Then I'm gonna clean it with some alcohol or any other uh, things that you could use really to clean it. I like alcohol. I just do a light rub over it. And uh, that should get us pretty much free from any grease or debris. Uh, and we're ready for our first coat of paint. Luckily, the paint dries really fast, so uh, probably like 30 minutes after we paint it, we're going to be ready to start putting the clear coats, and uh, I'm hoping to get all our clear coating done by the end of tonight, so we let that cure for a day or two. Uh, we'll intermittently take it in and out of the sun to make sure it's doing some slow uh, curing, and uh, hopefully that'll be the last layer we need to put on there as far as clear goes, and we could sand it, polish it, and uh, get to the fun stuff, which is assembling it and hearing this guitar actually come to life. So stick around, guys, and uh, we'll be back soon with the painting video. And there are the rest of the steps that remain alongside with this uh, beautiful Les Paul build we're doing for our customer. So stick around. We'll see you guys soon. All right, guys, so uh, I'm all masked up, ready to go. Ready to put our uh, layer of paint on there. Again, we're going black. I've shook the can up uh, for about a good 10 minutes now. I did warm it up like the previous uh, primer video. I don't know why, it just, I feel like it sprays better and uh, 
it dries quicker as well so I always like warming up my cans you don't necessarily have to but you can if you'd like so here we go All right, guys, so that's that for the neck. We're going to move on to the body next. I think we got pretty good coverage here. Alright guys, so we're going to let this dry out for like 10-15 minutes, come back, check the evenness on it, uh, we don't need a respray after this, we're pretty much ready for clear, I think I got a really good coverage on this, but uh, the only way to find out is to let this bad boy dry. Alright guys, so it's all painted, I'm super happy with it, I'm ready to move to the next steps. Well, as you can see, I started scraping the bindings already. Um, I'm doing it again with this X-Acto razor blade. Works spectacular. Just uh, just gotta be careful not to scratch anything uh, and just focus on the areas you need to actually clean up. So uh, I'm gonna keep pushing at this until we're finished. I'm almost all the way at the end. So let's keep it going. I'm probably gonna let this little part dry a little bit more. Uh, 
It looks like it's a little bit wet still, so we're gonna let that dry that area, but everything else seemed fine so far, so we're just gonna keep moving at it. It's just starting to look really beautiful with this outline. I think it's looking at really, really, really nice. I'm slowly peeling away layers until I'm satisfied with the amount of white showing. <laughs> Just about there. I think we pretty much got it all. And uh, this is how she looks. Now we're just gonna let this fully cure and dry for another like 30 minutes and we'll be back to spray the clear coat on this. And uh, hopefully, like I said earlier in the video, we'll be good enough to uh, just color sand from there on after and just move forward with assembling this guitar. All right, guys, here's that moment we've been waiting for. Uh, we're getting ready to spray the clear coat. Uh, this is that two part clear coat, um, 2K meaning two parts actually. So we're gonna put that red cap in the bottom, put it in there, hit it, and then shake the cap a little bit more and we'll be ready to spray. So stay tuned, I'm really excited to put this coat on. So far, everything's been going really, really well. Uh, all we need to do is get this uh, clear coat sprayed on there and uh, if everything permits, we should be able to start uh, color sanding and polishing within a day or two. And uh, we'll do another video of actually putting together the guitar and all the little challenges that we're gonna run into, because I'm sure we are going to run into some challenges. I have never put together a guitar where I don't run, run into. All right guys, so we just pop that in. We're gonna shake it for another two minutes as the uh, instructions say, and uh, start our clear spray. All right, we're gonna hit it with this coat, and then uh, if it's only three to five minutes, we're gonna hit on the full-blown coat again. All right, so we're gonna start with the
There you have it guys. Literally a glass finish. I always like to leave my guitars more on the side. Hopefully you don't have any runs. But that way you reduce the chances of collecting a lot more dust on it. As you can see, this is so clean that we're probably going to have like minimal color sanding and polishing work to do it on this bad boy. It, it came out really, really, really good. Especially for not really having a spray boot. I mean, look at it. Same thing with the neck. Really nice and shiny. Got that deep black and clear coat on there. I'm happy with this, guys. I think it came out phenomenal. Stick around. Uh, we'll be back with the color sanding and uh, polishing and then we're gonna go right back down to assembly and getting all the nice little pieces on this guitar welcome back guys so uh it's been three days now that we've let this clear coat dry uh i did lightly color sand this a little bit i started off with a 1500 grit it looks like it's uh doing the job pretty well it didn't take me long to get it here um, we're going to continue sanding with the 1500. If we run into any heavy bumps or anything, we'll probably switch to like an 800 or a thousand. Um, today I'm going to be using these little sanding pads, uh, along with this little foam holder. I got this from Pet Boys, I believe a few years back and I had it left over and I like it cause it's uh, tiny controllable and, uh, pretty flexible, but not too flexible. So it's a pretty good sanding block. I got uh, a little spray over here. It's just a regular alcohol bottle. I dumped it out and put uh, clean water in here. Um, normally with wood, you don't want a wet sand unless you're raising the grains. But for this occasion, I got, uh, I, I'm sure you guys saw how much clear coat we put on this. So I think it's pretty well sealed. I, I feel confident that we'll be okay uh, using a little bit of water to color sand this. So. Let's get started and see where this uh, leads us. Okay, so it looks like sanding side to side on the circle radius uh, does a pretty good job. So it looks like we're going to continue doing that from here on until we lay it down a little more flat. As you can see, these shiny spots still need to come down a little bit. I am working with 1500, so it's taking longer than usual, but uh, it was really smooth to begin with. So I think uh, I'm going to keep working with the 1500. Doesn't look like it's taking too much longer than it would uh, regularly. So let's just keep continuing with the 1500. And uh, we'll have less sanding stages to do, I guess, since we're going up with such a high plane. Okay, so this That actually is pretty damn smooth. It's awesome. <laughs> These sides we're not gonna touch because they're clean. I don't wanna open any of the edges. Yeah, that's gonna be a kind of pain. Yeah. All right, guys. So here we have it. Um, we got the sanded with fifteen hundred grit. 
really nice there's barely any shiny spots on there um, I am sanding with 1500 so it's a lot harder to penetrate the clear down to the paint but even then I am really careful I stay away from these edges uh, it's really clean if I polish it and I'm not happy with it I'll probably go back and risk it then but uh, since the paintwork and clear clear coat uh, was so smooth I think we're gonna get away with it if you could uh, get away from sanding these thinner corners I would really suggest doing so because no matter how uh, good you are you end up burning through clear really easily over here so I would definitely avoid those areas if it's clean if it's not you might as well give it a shot by sanding it and then if you need to re-clear it you gotta re-clear it to get it done right I'm probably going to touch up this back a little bit. I'm not too happy with that, so I'm going to take my time. I'm going to be really careful with it. And uh, let's see how that goes. And we're ready to basically move on to the body, which I'm sure everybody's been anticipating along uh, with myself and uh, our camera crew over here. <laughs> awesome. Let's do this, guys. I'm not going to use the black anymore over there. I'm just going to try to do it with my finger. I'm going to keep it as controlled as possible. Just a little smudge more, and we're done. Cross your fingers, guys. And we're gonna leave it at that. The rest should polish up and look pretty smooth. So here you have it, guys. That's the neck. Um, nice and color sanded we're probably gonna do another sanding with 2500 it moves a lot quicker from here because we got it all smoothed out so that'll be a quick little rub down of 2500 and we're ready for uh, polishing this piece right here All right, guys, so as we promised, down to the body, let's remove this uh, stock that we added on and uh, let's get sanding. All right, guys, so to be cutting down clear with uh, 1500 grit this quickly, you know it's done right. Um, I'm not trying to brag, but you could see with 1500 grit, look how quickly we got down to uh, almost having it flat. There's a few fish eyes around here, 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 here but we'll just focus on those with a little bit of finger pressure. You wanna go very light. You don't wanna go around it. You wanna go literally on the, on the little dot that's sticking up. So let's keep going at this until we have it nice and smooth. And then uh, basically I wanna do this portion right here and then move up and do this portion and flip it over to the back. So let's just keep it rolling. I'm gonna grab another piece of uh, sandpaper because these are really tiny and they do get clogged up even uh, even though we're using water with this setup right here.
Just move it like this. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut these edges. Okay guys, so now we're getting really close to being very smooth on this portion, the lower portion of the guitar. Um, I am gonna smoothly feather out the, uh, the edges a little bit more, but I will not touch it, uh, touch the edges with sandpaper whatsoever. The edges usually don't need any uh, color sanding, so uh, I would stay away from those as much as possible. But I do want to get this little corners out right here. So, um, we're still gonna have a little shiny black line, but not this much. It's gonna be a little bit less from where it's at right now. They're there too. They haven't gone away. Uh, the ripples. Mm. Those things followed all the way from primer to paint. That's just crazy, huh? Oh, no, no, no. Not the ripple. There's just a little speck of those things over there. I see. The ripple is gone. Yeah, it's gone. Wait. Alrighty guys, so we got the lower half done. I'm really happy with it. Um, you could still see very few little shiny dots, but we're still gonna do a 2500 coat of sandpaper. So it's either gonna get those out or they're gonna be close to uh, being invisible. So now we're just gonna continue the top portion of this guitar uh, with the, uh, the 1500 and then flip it to the back, get the back done and uh, move forward with 2500 grit. Careful with those edges over there. Yeah, let's clear it up, see how it looks first. Nice. Yeah, we got a lot of coat right there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks beautiful. That was good. That was some persistent sanding. Mm -hmm. Well, checking. You start to feel like a rough look. Oh, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. It's just finishing, huh? So you're a little bit. None of this I'm just touching now. Mm -hmm. I feel like I need some. Yeah, you could put some juice on it. Just a little bit. Thank 
have nothing on it. This is just going to get off. Okay, we're good. Yeah. It's over here. This uh, is going to get covered by the neck. Oh, this is going to be like this. Yeah, okay, so we're good over there. Maybe just a little bit more here. Mm -hmm. And then, let me see. This part. This is cool. And then just this. So just this. I'll take this. Now, wait. One, two, three. Okay. Here, this control board. This thing right here. Here. One shot. Wait. So we can see you remember. Okay. That's not good, huh? There it is. Okay, now let's just do this little top corner and we're flipping it to the right side. Alrighty guys, so it looks like we're pretty much done. Yes, we are ready to move forward. This is pretty darn close to having an immaculate finish once it's uh, polished, buffed and polished. So uh, let's switch this side over to the back and uh, keep moving forward. Outside in is the way. Mm -hmm. Outside in is the way. Like this? No, like from the lips to the inside. Yeah, like this. Yeah. Just down. Yeah, that's what you said. Yeah. No, no, I'm saying like starting from the outside towards the inside. Yeah, 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 exactly. We're going to get these corners clean and then the inside. Mm -hmm. Just starting off with these edges. You can see good. Just a little more right here. It's really good. All right, guys, so we got the 1500 done. Everything came out good so far. Uh, we didn't bust into the actual paint. We got plenty of clear coat. We're going to do 2000 next. So I decided to go from 1500 to 2000 and I'm gonna polish right from there. I know a lot of people like raising up the grains and going all the way up to like 4,000, 5,000. Personally, from my experience, I don't see much of a difference in the finish. So I like just stopping it at 2,000 or 2,500. Um, I like leaving as much clear coat on the uh, guitar as possible. So it has a lot less chance of breaking through the paint barrier. Um, and for, for the future too, actually, because you could uh, always uh, take this guitar apart and color sand and polish it again throughout the years and uh, the more material you have on there, the better that's always gonna come out. So 2000, here we go. We're gonna do one final touch up uh, on this and uh, get ready to do the actual polishing. And before we move forward, uh, I wanna show you what I'm sanding with. I cut these up into four pieces. It's a circle, they're circle discs. It's called Tiger Shark. I got this from Amazon. It does a really, really, really good job actually. Uh, of, of sanding it's it's really nice sandpaper and it lasts a long time um, I'm not affiliated with them or anything so it's not a commercial they're not paying me to say this but I really do like it I just cut them up into little pizza pies and uh, it's more controlled that way rather than using a five inch sanding disc uh, with your bare hands so. endorsements are welcomed
it, guys. So there you have it. That's the front. We're going to flip it around, do the same thing on the back, and uh, we're pretty much ready to start polishing this. So uh, we got it color sanded. Uh, we did 2500. I'm ready to use some cutting compound. Uh, I like to use Meguiar's Mirror Glaze. It's an ultra cut compound. It works pretty good. It's a heavy cut. Um, and I usually just use like a very soft foam pad with a, with a drill. It's a small piece, so it doesn't need to spin too fast. You could, uh, at the end of the day, get a really good uh, gloss on this. And then uh, basically that's what we're gonna be using. Uh, so the steps where you have to uh, color sand it, 1500, 2500. Then you go take a bath and uh, wash yourself and then you get the towel. I'm just kidding about that. I am using the same towel that I was using beneath here, uh, beneath the guitar, just so I don't get any compound on me. It does get really messy and uh, it's a pretty good way of uh, saving your clothes. So let's get to polishing guys. You want to spread that around or as soon as you start that drill, it's going to blow it everywhere. So I just like spreading it around, getting it coated on the whole body and then continuing from there. All right, guys, so we got it all polished up. Uh, I'm probably going to assemble the neck next. Then we're going to go with a smaller polishing uh, head to run over it and make sure we got all the little corners and crevices. My pad uh, was a five inch pad and I need to get a smaller one to do the finer details. But uh, now I'm gonna glue the neck, let that rest overnight uh, so it's nice and dry in the morning. I'm basically gonna use this melamine board that I put tape over. I'm gonna put this in the back and clamp it down once I put the neck on. So we'll clamp it down from right here. And uh, hopefully by tomorrow morning it'll be dry enough. I can make a run to the hardware store, grab myself some uh, smaller polishing pads, do the final polishing on this, and then we're pretty much ready to assemble. So let's get let's get to it, guys. We're gonna use some uh, Type On Three Ultimate Wood Glue. This stuff is really strong once it dries. So uh, here you go. Here you go. So uh, this thing is uh, pretty good to use for next. Little stick. I like putting the glue on the actual body because when it when the neck slides down it doesn't squeeze it out from the sides of the neck it more uh, squeezes it down and then uh, there is a lot less surface area to clean up that way. I got a really tight fitment on the neck, so I'm not gonna put too much glue. I find it to be kind of pointless doing that because it's all gonna squeeze out anyway. But uh, 
just a nice little coat that will depend on your actual smoothness and tightness of the neck so let's see how this goes down it's a nice tight fit want to make sure it's all seated all around little push and uh, I think we're ready to clamp ready to clamp this Just kind of finger tightening it so we don't over tighten it too much I'm probably gonna put another one right here so one in the front one in the back but before I get to that I'm gonna get a clean paper towel wipe off the excess glue it's very little actually didn't squeeze out a whole lot I like to just wet a paper towel get it liberally wet and, uh, just grab the corners wipe it down Flip it around, wipe it down, boom. And uh, that stuff cleans off pretty easy. Now this is a black guitar and uh, the wood glue will show on the white, but those are probably like little touch-ups we could do all the way at the end just to make sure we're nice and cleared up on this all right so let's put the next clamp in the front Again, finger tighten it, not too much, but not too little. You want it to be nice and jammed in. Make sure all the edges are pressed in. There, we're squeezing out a little more wood glue from the back, but that's totally expected. All right, guys, so here we are, just waiting on our neck to uh, dry out. Polish did come out pretty good. I'm really happy with it. I can't say I'm 100% excited about it, or uh, I think it's 100% compared to what we've been able to get before. But uh, I think when I go and polish it one more time, do a detail polish of all the little uh, imperfections that are bugging me on this guitar. Uh, I'll be a lot more happier with it. Um, yeah, my five inch pad was just a little too big, so I can't really control that. A good thing is that I do have a little bit of patience. I didn't let it run off the edges. Uh, because if we did, we we're, we we're probably going to have a lot of burn, burn marks on there, which is a pain to fix. You do not want to do that. Uh, off of experience, uh, my experience told me to just hold it over here and uh, call it a night. Glue the neck, get it ready, and uh, we'll do the final 
polishing when I actually get the right pads for it. I did have a few here in the workshop, but um, they were kind of old and I didn't want to risk putting more scratches into it. So new pads for this guitar and uh, we'll keep it moving from there. What's up guys? So uh, we're back with this guitar. We got all the color sanding polishing done. Looks spectacular, really happy with it. We're gonna do a light little touch up polish once we're done with the whole guitar. Uh, I stuck some um, vinyl transfer paper that I had in the bottom so I could freely move this around without worrying about it getting scratched. Uh, this is gonna come through clutch. Uh, before moving forward, what I really like to do is um, I like to put the bridge um, studs in place so when I turn it around and put it down and when I'm doing the wiring we're basically not touching the actual paintwork and it's just resting on top of those guys and uh, the neck basically for these Les Pauls it uh, sits basically on this nut up here and it gives a good little surface to work on it you don't need no protection uh, pieces or towels or anything like that beneath it so uh, today we're actually gonna get started on this copper taping. We're gonna tape all of these uh, inner open cavities here, here, one point with my index finger. Uh, we're gonna do the where the pickups are, where the pickups go. We're gonna all copper tape and all of that. And then we're gonna get started on our wiring. Uh, this is uh, from EMG, this kit. I got all the pots and the switches and uh, the the jack ports right here and uh yeah basically this whole wiring uh came from emg uh i did buy these separately i bought the passive kit for uh the the pickups that i actually bought which are these h4s and h4as uh, the, the h4as are gonna go up towards the neck and uh, the h4s are gonna go uh in the bottom for uh, for the bridge so we got those uh it's really straightforward. I just followed this diagram. It's like literally plug and play. The only thing we do have to uh, solder is going to be this uh, uh, selector switch. And uh, that's pretty much it. Everything else is pretty much just plug and play. So that makes things really easy. All right, guys, so let's get to it. I'm gonna start uh, putting in this carpet tape and moving forward from there. So we can start putting in our electrical, putting down our actual uh, pickups and uh, bridge and tuners and all that other good stuff. So stick around with me and let's get this guitar built. Yes, and little exacto knife right here. That's that's probably all you're gonna need to cut this copper, wire, uh, copper tape. It's really simple and uh, flexible, so it's easy to work with. I usually like working uh, in segments on these things. I don't try to do the whole thing at once because it becomes near impossible to do that but uh working in little pieces as we go definitely works really well for this type of stuff Thank you. 
It's human. All right guys, so time to press in these little studs. I like using the uh, end of a hammer, not this part, but this part. Uh, I have a couple rags placed underneath it so I don't uh, press down on the body uh, in between rough surfaces. So here we go guys, let's push this first one in. That's one. And that's two. It did take a little bit of uh, force to get that done, but uh, it's better tight than loose, honestly. So here we go, guys. Okay guys, so next I'm gonna go ahead and put in the, let me just put this down real quick. Uh, next I'm gonna go ahead and put in the actual uh, pots. These guys, they're already pre-wired. I like separating them sometimes, it's easier to work that way. So I'm gonna start off with the next.
All right, guys, so I'm gonna use these to solder uh, the switch wire up, the pickup selector switch wire, and then uh, we'll finally connect these these wires that come to this uh, control cavity and they're gonna go in here, these uh, one, two, three, four ports and we're pretty much done uh, with the wiring as far as that goes and then we just gotta connect the pickups and the little things here and there but uh, I'm gonna keep pushing forward. I'm not about to solder this right now. I'm gonna turn it around and put all the uh, the nuts and, uh, and washers for the pots and then we'll probably move forward to putting on the tuners and uh, we'll connect these uh, pickups and then from there we'll do the soldering for this wiring the pickup switch and uh, just keep moving it forward so hang in there guys I'm gonna keep going step by step for you guys so you guys can see exactly how this thing is being put together All right, guys, so here we have it. We got um, all the stuff on there, all the chrome, uh, all the gold plated stuff. Sorry, it's late, by the way. I've been working away at this bad boy. We got all the, uh, all the parts installed, my wiring done. I'll uh, zoom in a little bit right there. So you can see I'm still fully not finished. I just gotta do like, uh, I gotta solder the grounds together and uh, I believe we could test it from there. But I basically wanted to get back on the camera and show you guys how it came out. Really, really, really nice. I'm really excited to uh, show this to you guys and I can't wait till the owner actually checks this thing out. It, it came out really beautiful. But uh, yeah, from here on, I'm just gonna get started with the strings. I'm gonna string everything on there and then uh, plug it in and see how it sounds. So for the strings, um, these are my favorite uh, strings, they're Fender Super Bullets. Uh, you put these bad boys on, they don't break. You'll probably wear them out before they break. And uh, I really love these. I've been using these for years and uh, you can't go wrong with them.